This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 24 of Retired Racehorse Radio on the Horse Radio Network, brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products and Cashel Products. Retired Racehorse Radio is your guide to the adoption, care, and training of the retired racehorse, brought to you in cooperation with the Retired Racehorse Project and New Vocations Racehorse Adoption Program. On today's show, the Thoroughbred Makeover veteran Sarah Helpler joins us to talk about how she used the makeover to empower women to support each other. USPA certified instructor Robin Welker Sanchez talks polo with us and how OTTBs are perfect for the sport. And don't forget to stick around for our new vocation winner circle, Adoptable Horse of the Week. Stay tuned. And they're off on Retired Racehorse Radio, the podcast that is your guide to the adoption, care, and training of the retired racehorse. This is Jamie Jennings of Norman, Oklahoma. And this is Joy Hills from Kalamazoo, Michigan. And you're listening to Retired Racehorse Radio. Well, sorry, Joy, I'm pushing through as best as I can. I do have the flu, so if my voice sounds a little bit weird, that is why. But I could not miss this episode because I'm super excited about both the guests that we're going to have on, but especially about the polo player that's coming on. I met because she actually just adopted a horse from me. I know. When you messaged me about that, I was like, first off, congratulations. I feel like you had that horse for five minutes, so she must have been super impressive. But also... You got an excellent person to bring her home, and she's going to have a great career. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. So, yes, Robin and her husband are both polo players. And, you know, the the last horse that I had that had polo bloodlines, they were interested in, but he was just a little too tall. And she's like, hey, if you ever get a 15-hand thoroughbred mare, let me know. Well, the next horse I got in was a 15-hand thoroughbred mare. So I worked her for a couple of days, and I called her, and I was like, you're going to like this one. And she was just phenomenal. So yeah, I had her five days. It was fantastic. I'm really happy. That is really amazing. Happy. You are doing such excellent work. I'm very proud of you. Thanks. Yeah, I'm taking a little break now to get over the flu. And then uh, next week, I'll pick up my next one. I I'm love taking it. taking a week off and ride my own horses. I wish I can say I'm that productive, but, you know, Michigan winter's still here. We oh finally got some snow. I have like four or five inches with more on the way. Is that so. a good thing to get snow? Honestly, I'm pretty excited about it. My horses are ready for it. The The frozen mud's just not our um, jam. You know, that that's not what we signed up for when we moved up here. Yeah, so so the snow is better than the non-snow it is. because it, it is. just coats the mud. And it looks like it's going to stay in, uh, this will make Glenn cringe, and freezing temperatures for a while. So hopefully it will not turn to ice anytime soon. So I might get some snowy trail rides, which is always fun and Hopefully I'll get some good pictures for the Instagram on that too. Do you do anything particular for their feet to not ball up with snow? Cause I lived in a snowy tundra mm-hmm. for one winter and I was mm-hmm. like, hell no, I'm getting out of here. And I left, but th- that was a big problem with the snow that we had was yeah. it would get in their feet and make them trip over. I'm really lucky that all my horses are barefoot. So I don't really have that issue. Although one of the horses that I ride over the winter, Daphne, she just got shoes, some corrective shoeing. And we put pads in. So she's actually got like a snow package that keeps Uh it from balling up and icing in there. So Um, barefoot horses, it doesn't happen. Not really. You do have to kind of check it. But for the most part, I've never had an issue with it in the past or anything, which is it's convenient. It's nice. I just remember somebody saying, you just put a little butter in the underneath of their feet. And I'm like, "Um, butter, that sounds like it's going to get fairly expensive. I will say I don't ride when it kind of gets that slushy snow, but still compacting. You know, the good snow for a snowball fight. I don't ride during that because it does have a tendency to want to pack in a little bit more, which it's slippery anyway. So they're not into it. They're like, please leave me alone. It's both hot and cold. I don't want to see you today. Like I could tell that this this weekend. (laughs) I mean, that is just something that 
yeah, my, our producer Glenn is in Florida, and I just moved to Oklahoma from Arizona, and it is just not something that I want no, to do. I definitely talked to my husband today. I'm like, I feel like it might be time to look at moving down south again. He's like, can we can we wait like a year? I was like, mm. why? Mm-mm. Why let me get out of here? <laughs> I went out now. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to, de- well, let's get to our first guest. But before we do that, we need to hear from our sponsor, our title sponsor, Kentucky Performance Products. Woo! Her life was falling apart around her. But when she saw his sweet face and heard the low knicker, the pain eased. She stood in the stall for some time, running a brush over his sleek coat down his powerful muscles and over his tight, cool tendons. He cocked his back leg, waiting patiently. She scratched his favorite spot and was rewarded with a crinkled smile and outstretched neck. The stress flowed from her body, and she knew with him in her life, she would make it through. This love story is brought to you by Endure Extra, providing high-fat calories, direct-fed microbials, and natural vitamin E to support optimal condition and performance. The horse that matters to you matters to Kentucky Performance Products. Call 859-873-2974 or visit kppusa.com to order today. Well, we have Sarah Hepler on with us today. She has competed at the Thoroughbred Makeover three times already. Uh, She's been riding OTTV since 1990. And not just that, she is an inspiration. Welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you. I I cannot even, I was like reading your bio and I was like, this girl (laughs) is so accomplished and I need to like take a look at my own life. So why don't you go ahead, tell us a little bit about what brought you to Thoroughbreds. So uh, when I started riding, and I'm like really aging myself, I actually just had my 40th birthday yesterday. <laughs> Happy but birthday. When I, oh my God, you're you. so old. Oh, holy moly. I'm so wow. Old. <laughs> when I started, <laughs> when I started riding and showing, thoroughbreds were it. Like we didn't have the warm blood invasion yet. So the farm that I rode at, and I started in Huntsy, um, it was all off the track thoroughbreds. So my very first horse, and I'll tell you this great story. I lost my arm when I was 10 years old. I was in a really bad car accident. I had a a bad head injury and the doctors had told my parents, like the likelihood is she isn't going to wake up. So my dad, I'd been taking lessons for two years at that point. And I'd been just begging and begging and begging for a horse. I mean, I had been begging for a horse long before I even started riding, but it was even worse once I started taking lessons. My dad whispered in my ear, like, if you wake up, I will buy you your first horse. And lo and behold, a day later, (laughs) I woke up and I said, Daddy, I'm going to hold you to that. (laughs) I'm not crying. You're crying. (laughs) I know. I was like, I just got chills. (laughs) Horses are magic. (laughs) They are magical. And my dad did buy me my first horse, which was a 20 something off the track thoroughbred. Mm -hmm. Um, He'd been there, done that. And the amazing thing about thoroughbreds for me, having only one arm is I need something that's incredibly sensitive to your seat and leg. And that has been good. I I was going to say what I didn't expect that sentence. So many times you hear that thoroughbreds are too sensitive. And, you know, we just had someone on who talked about using them as therapy horses and I would think stereotypically, you know, obviously I'm for thoroughbreds, but if, you know, stereotypically you'd hear like, oh, there's no way. So just the fact you said that, to me, again, you're just giving me chills, girl. Just give me chills. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. So why, why does the sensitivity help you with your, and I use this quote, and I hate to say this word, but wh- what does it help you with your disability? So because I you know, the strength, uh, in my upper, like in my arm so much or hands, because I, I just have one, I need a horse that's going to be sensitive enough to, to listening to my shifting of weight and, and my legs. So a horse that is not sensitive, I'm going to really struggle with moving correctly because I don't have the ability to support with my hands quite as much as a, you know, as a, as a two-handed rider. Gotcha. 
Interesting. Yeah, I never would have thought of that either. So, yeah. so how much do you think you train the horses on on it? Because you train now these off the track thoroughbreds, and you're going to be in the makeover coming up. And mm-hmm. congratulations! How much of the horse do you think you put into the seat and legs versus the hand? Well, I mean, I would love to say. I'm a dressage rider, so 100%. Right. I'm <laughs> all seat and legs, no hands. <laughs> but we know. I, I am not that accomplished, and I would say it's probably 75, 25. Okay. Um, I, I have been having a little bit of a bad habit of being more like using the rain more than I should be, but that is an old, own personal bad habit. But yeah, I would say probably 75% of the horses in the seat and legs. Gotcha. So I kind of, Jamie had mentioned you're applying for the makeover again, but I want to backtrack to your last makeover a little bit. Tell us about your unicorn Fletcher. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) Fletchy. So so Fletcher, um, how he came to me, it was just, I had just moved and we were um, at a farm, myself and one of my best friends were at a farm where we were co-oping, like self-care. And I really just needed a buddy for my older gelding who wasn't sound, wasn't really holding up to everything. I just needed a buddy for him because I had a mare that I thought was supposed to be my 2018 makeover horse. And I thought we were really, really going places. And I'd gotten a war horse and he had a little bit of a testosterone problem. We're not really sure what happened, but he was very, very aggressive towards my gelding and I had to like move him quick. So I went to a friend of mine who I'd gotten my 2017 makeover horse. And I said, look, I need a gelding. And she's like, well, I have my baby and I love him and I'd love to keep him as a pony, but I'm pregnant. And the doctor says, don't ride. So I'm willing to part with him and her Fletcher. And I didn't, because I had my mare who was so talented. I was like, even if he's just a trail horse, I'm, I'm really okay with this. I just need this brain, this like quiet, consistent brain. That's all I need. Mm -hmm. So things fell apart with my mare. She was quite the mare (laughs) (laughs) and, and she needed a psychiatrist rider and Mm -hmm. that's not who I am as a rider. And so um, I was like, well, you know, I'm going, I think I might withdraw from the makeover She's, this isn't going to do her any good. It's not going to do me any good. And the trainer I was riding at the time, who's one of them was one of the main volunteers for the makeover, Kathy Augie. She said to me, well, why don't you like hop on Fletcher and let's just see what shakes out. Like you could even just take him for belly has such a great brain. And I got on him and she watched him move. Um, and a couple of friends were around and they're like, yeah, you only have 60 days, but we're going to take him in dressage. And I was like, Okay, cool. (laughs) Okay, cool. Whatever. (laughs) And, and I had already planned this freestyle, which is even though I did better in dressage at that makeover than I did in freestyle, everybody remembers the freestyle. It was my first time ever writing a para test. I had shied away from them for so long because I didn't want anyone to think that I needed a special test or special program. I wanted to show everybody that I could compete with you know, able-bodied riders is, I guess, the PC term, and compete with them just as well. But as you guys know, the makeover, the, all the makeover trainers, all the staff, all the volunteers are so supportive and so incredible and so inclusive. I felt like it was okay. Like, it was okay to do this. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm sorry, I still get a little teary. I talk to you about it. Um, you know, it's okay. amazing. I'm crying too. So. <laughs> we, we hear from so many para riders that don't want to ride in the para classes because they don't yeah. want any sort of advantage or help or anything. They just want to be uh, the last rider we talked to was missing a leg. And she's like, yeah, you know, I, yep. I don't, I can't, you know, I just go in there to the regular classes. And she's like, if I'm doing it right, then nobody notices. And uh, I think yep. that's such a brave and such an amazing and powerful accomplishment. So you took him after 60 days and did the freestyle and did dressage. Yep. Oh my yep. gosh. Our 29th post-track ride was literally down center line in Rolex. 
Oh my gosh. And you know what? If you were to look about two arenas over to the right, you'd see a horse that I had trained for nine months walking backwards on his hind legs. So we all have our gifts. I I should have had my horse stable next to yours. <laughs> Fortunately, my freestyle yeah. went a little better, but yeah, that's so funny. Yeah. Wow. What an amazing story. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that freestyle you know, it was something I started working on with my mare, and it was something I really wanted to present at the makeover. Lift Your Sister was um, a campaign that I was introduced to locally through the Women's Foundation of Genesee Valley. You know, they're they're an organization that helps empower women, you know, financially through grant money to help them become economically sustainable on their own. And it was such it's such an incredible program, and I learned so much not it's not horse related but I learned so much through these women that were part of this program um it's just something that I wanted to promote and sorry (laughs) and Fletcher just gave me that opportunity and so did the makeover and it was just everything came together and it was really amazing he definitely is that unicorn horse for sure and I love I'm looking (laughs) at one of the photos too and you put a little unicorn on his bridle (laughs) it's so perfect (laughs) So we'll make sure to share that with our, yes, we'll make sure to share that with our listeners so they can see it. But no, it's such (laughs) an amazing story. And I think you take a great message that it is a competition that is for anyone and everyone who has a heart for these horses. And you're going to be signing up. Well, you applied for your fourth round. Tell us a little bit about your horse for this coming year. If you have one, my God, she might get one 20 days out. That's true. New (laughs) challenge. New year, new you. (laughs) (laughs) I do have a horse. His jockey club name is Fast B. I feel like naming a racehorse that you doom yourself to having the slowest horse there. Yep. (laughs) He's he's six years old. He never broke his maiden. He raced up until the very end of November at, at Finger Lakes, which is my local track. It's like 10 minutes from where I live, which is dangerous. And he is by far the best conformed horse that I've ever purchased in my life. He has this incredibly huge shoulder. His neck just comes out of his shoulder so beautifully. And to ride him, he is definitely another Fletcher. And my heart horse, Calvin, who was supposed to be my horse in 2019, and we unfortunately missed the makeover, but he's a lot like Calvin as well in the respect that he's very, very quiet. He has a fantastic brain. He's a little bit more curious than the, than the ones that I've had in the past, but he doesn't overreact to anything. And once he settles in a little bit more to his not not being a racehorse, he's got incredible movement under there. And I hope to do dressage and show jumpers with him, but we'll see where he wants to go. I love it. Well, we're going to be cheering for you, Sarah, for sure. We hope you make it in. Thank you so, so much for coming on the show today and sharing your story. I'm going to go wipe the tears from my eyes. (laughs) But it's seriously an amazing story for you to share with us. If people want to learn more about your next venture, where can they follow you? So you can find me on Facebook, my um, personal profile. I'm Sarah Elizabeth. I my journey to the makeover is still under um, Calvin's page, which is Jacopo 2019 Thoroughbred Makeover, I believe, because Facebook won't let me change the name to include both of them. And I did our name him Hobbs. So it is the adventures of Calvin and Hobbs. So yeah, feel free to come follow us there on Instagram. I'm at Sarah Beth 0119 and at Calvin and Hobbs OTTB. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again, Sarah, and we'll see you at the makeover. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Good luck. Thank you. you. Cashel Company helps you enjoy the ride with their full line of trail bags and tush cushions. From candle bags to horn bags and everything in between, comfort and convenience on the trail is what Cashel does best. To stay up to date with the latest products and news, follow Casual Company on Facebook and Instagram. To find their products, visit an authorized dealer or visit CashelCompany.com. Our next guest, Robin Welker Sanchez. She's a USPA umpire and uh, active on several United States Polo Association committees. She's a certified horsemanship association master instructor, an ACI certifier, an AQAG professional horseman, a Polo Association certified overseas polo instructor, 
the, the list goes on. CPR, first aid, AED instructor, ASEP. I don't even know what all these these <laughs> things mean. She's also trained EMT. She's an impact test proctor. I, again, her list, she's a very, very impressive woman. And the list just keeps going on and on. And so let me welcome Robin to the show. Welcome to the show, Robin. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Oh my gosh. Okay, y'all. This is the person that adopted Miss Alva. How is she doing? Miss Alva is doing well. She's starting to figure out how to fit in with the herd, but she's just lovely. She's just got such a nice demeanor. She's fitting in really well. She's she's a people horse, that's for sure. Yes, yes, she is. I'm so excited that you adopted her and then through that we got to meet it's a very interesting, you know, thoroughbreds and polo. I just never thought until I went to the thoroughbred makeover and I met Justin Powers and some other polo players. I, I guess I, I did never think about thoroughbreds being associated with polo. Talk to us a little bit about what you like about the thoroughbred breed and using them for polo. So one thing that makes thoroughbreds real conducive to polo is it takes a lot of stamina. They are, you know, essentially, I, I'll put a tracker on to see how far I travel as an umpire. Um, and I'm doing seven miles in a game, which that's for the whole game, not per period. So a horse will tend to play a period or a portion of a period. But, but is a period a chucker? A yeah, a chucker, yes. Yeah, you yes. don't have to dumb it down and... for us. Get right into it, girl. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... So yeah, so the thoroughbreds are real conducive to having that stamina, having that endurance that we need for the sport. Do you use the same, there's four chuckers, right? Four to six. It depends on the level and the type of polo you're playing. So in arena polo, it's always four chuckers. And in outdoor, depending on the club and what the club chooses, it's either four chucker or six chucker polo. In Argentina, they're playing eight chucker polo. Good God. Um, that seems like a long game. So how, how many horses do you use in, in these games? So again, depending on the level. So at the level of, say, arena polo, where you're not covering as much distance, you can play a horse in the first period, give him a rest during the second and halftime, and then bring him back and play him again in the third period. So essentially, playing a lower level arena polo, you can get by with two horses. Now, if you go all the way up to, say, the U.S. Open to the high goal polo, these guys, these players are switching off the horses anytime there's a, a penalty or a timeout. They'll run off the field, hop onto another horse, and come back on so that their horse is always fresh, that their horse is never exhausted. So they will sometimes play two to three horses per chucker. So is there so somebody in, like, guys, in the... Is that like a groom keeping them all warmed up or something and cooling them down? They yep. must have lots of employees. Yep. They have lots of employees. So they've got, you know, they'll have the main groom, his helper, and then spare holders. And, and the spare is the one you jump on, you know, if you're feeling like your horse is tired because they don't want the horse to get tired. They do not want to go to the bottom of that horse. They would rather have it fresh and play it, let's say, four minutes in the first period and then come back on it four more minutes in the fourth period or the fifth. And I've even seen some people play a horse three or four chuckers, but two minutes each time. So that the horse isn't playing a tremendous amount of time, but they're always fresh. They're never getting tired. So depending on what level you're, you're looking at, my dad always used to say pulling polos, like having a boat, you can either have a bass boat with an outboard motor, or you can have a 200 foot yacht. So arena mm -hmm. polo is <laughs> bass boat with the outboard motor. <laughs> gotcha. And the, and the U.S. Open is the 200 foot yacht. Now, um, interesting. I hope you don't mind me getting a little bit into your personal life. When you drove up, you did not come to see this filly alone. You brought your husband, who is, and I'm sorry, they're all the hot ones, the Argentinian polo player. Hello. Tell us about <laughs> how you guys met. So we met through polo. He's been, he, he has been a horseman since he was a small child. We've got pictures of him um, 
in the house that are just kind of kind of funny where he taught the horse to lay down and then he's standing on the horse. And uh, he always tells me stories about how he and his sister used to race each other to be able to ride double with their dad back from when he was coming back from work. Um, but uh, he started working um, for one of the best polo players in the world and has, has taken care of some of the top, top horses and does the majority of the training. He's very much the introvert, but just the exceptional, exceptional horseman. I'm, you, I'm just here for the ride. <laughs> oh, please. We'll talk a little bit about your job in a minute, but uh, you told me something really interesting about him. And if, if you do, you know, if you do know anything about polo and South America and kind of the South American equine culture, you know that it can be, it gets a re reputation for being fairly rough. Now you talked a little bit about some things that your husband has done differently. Yeah. So back when he started in polo, um, he was giving horses water the day of the game, which was unheard of, you know, sort of like a, uh, an old wives tale, you know, don't give them water. They'll be too heavy. They can't run. Um, and that was literally the thought process. And he'd give the horses water the day of the game. And it was like, Oh, your horses are going to be too slow, blah, blah, blah. And three best playing ponies in the Argentine open later, now everybody's giving their horses water. So, um, you know, to, to us in this day and age, that seems like kind of shocking. But, you know, in the, in the early 80s in South America, that was just kind of what the thought process was. So um, he actually has a lot of um, amazing titles to his name. You know, I go visit my mother-in-law and I see this little silver trophy in the laundry room. And I'm like, what's that? And he's like, oh... It's the Cuidador del Año. It's the Horse Trainer of the Year Award. The President of the Nation gave it to him, oh you know. And I'm like, seriously, it's sitting in the laundry room. I would have a shirt that says that that I would wear every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like me. Sometimes I just I look back at my husband. And I go, damn, I'm married. Well, do you ever do that? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Especially when he, when he deals with the tough ones. <laughs> right. So yeah. what do you guys do as, as a cup? Cause you tell, tell everybody a little bit about your job as a referee or an umpire. Sorry. Okay. Yes. So, uh, well, referees fine because except for polo umpires are baseball and softball. So, so referee would be acceptable, but we call it an umpire in polo. I am in the professional umpire program. There's about 26 of us, I believe. And I am the only female in the professional umpire program. I have been umpiring, a certified umpire since the 80s, and then came into the professional program in 20, I want to say 2015. I might be off on that, it might be 2016. But uh, I get clubs around the nation, request a professional umpire, and have boots will travel. So I, I'm fortunate enough that my job takes me everywhere. I literally umpired from Connecticut to California last year. I do a lot of the high school and college and arena polo. That's my sort of niche and what we call logo polo. So the more um, in, in one thing in polo that kind of makes it interesting is professionals and amateurs are on the same field. And the level of polo depending depends on how many per, the sort of the ratio of professionals to amateurs. So if you're talking U.S. Open, there's three professionals playing with one amateur typically. And if you're looking at what we call logo polo, it would be three amateurs with one professional is usually how that kind of rolls or all amateurs. And do you do clinics or we talked a little bit about you coming up here to the, cause you're in Texas and to the Oklahoma city area to do a clinic. Tell us about how people can learn. I, it's just one of those things I've always wanted to do joy. I just want to play. Some I know I'm polo. actually on the U S polo site right now, looking at clubs near me. Cause I want to try it. I just, it's one of those things. And I went to one polo lesson. If you don't, I don't know if I told you about this. I went to one polo lesson and I was in Atlanta and Robin, this guy pulled me into his house. He was like 115 years old and he pulls me in and sits me down at his kitchen table and starts explaining polo to me. And he's like telling me uh, uh, like things. And, and I, to me, I'm dressed to ride. I'm like, okay. And then he was like, okay, well, we'll see you next week. I was like, what? That's it? 
I don't never mind. Never mind. Okay. So I never went back. That wasn't, I was like, that wasn't the most fruitful lesson, I don't think. No, and it was um, two hours for me too. And I was like, forget it, I'm gonna drive back there. I don't have that kind of attention about, span. No, neither do I. <laughs> no. So funny enough. No. So I've still never had a proper lesson in polo, although I have Same. tried. So how can people get into polo? If they're just listening, that sounds fun. And what can we do? So you can go to the United States Polo Association website, which is uspolo.org, and you can find a, a button on there that'll say find a club near you. And it'll list the clubs, whether the clubs have polo schools, etc. So you're going to come out to Oklahoma City Polo Club, where I will be doing, they have a polo school every summer. People sign up for polo school, and I'm going to go out and teach a couple weeks of polo school. And you learn everything. We work on the ground with what we call foot mallets. So it's a shorter mallet and you're using it while you're on the ground so that we don't have to rename our horses Blinky. And then (laughs) we will also have wooden horses that you learn to swing the longer mallet from. And the longer mallet tends to be from 51 to 54 inches. Well, 50 to 54 inches, depending on the size of your horse. Then we do some like riding for polo because there's a little bit different cues on a polo horse, just slightly in that lower leg means everything to a polo horse. Mm -hmm. So a lot of disciplines where you're keeping a lower leg on him will means go, 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 go to a polo horse. Um, As a dressage rider, I would be okay. You would be fine. Um, It's funny when I (laughs) 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 dressage riders are so used to being in that balance box that when I get them out on a polo field, they just start running amok. And I'm like, hey, slow down. They're like, I can't, you can't hit that fast. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> they've, they've left the sandbox, man. They are out at it. I love We're it. We're not used to not having yeah. boundaries. <laughs> oh, 10, 10 acres of gr- flat grass just makes people lose their mind. <laughs> I might be that guy. I'm an inventor. It's just, it, it, all hell is going to break loose, Robin. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> It is so much fun. And I'll tell you what makes polo a little different to other horse sports. Number one, you get to own uh, lots of horses. (laughs) I have to buy it. We're halfway there, Jamie. We're halfway there. Oh, I'm there. (laughs) It's four tuckers. I need four horses. (laughs) Obviously. Um, And then the other thing that makes it great is not only do you have your equine teammate, but you've got human teammates too. So if you're not having the greatest day, you've got backup. So, <laughs> so that's what makes it really nice. And maybe you're not the greatest hand-eye person and great with the ball, but you're a really good rider. And we actually use our horses to push another horse out of the way so that we can get the ball. And there's all kinds of rules surrounding it. So there's no T-boning or anything, but you actually will physically push another horse out of the way to get to the ball. So I feel like my husband would learn to ride just to do this sport. Yeah. This sounds right up his alley. (laughs) It's a good husband activity. Now, when I come up to this in Oklahoma City, do I need to have my prepared string of polo horses? Do you provide them? Do I need to bring one? Should I start, uh, I don't know, cracking a bullwhip around them and make sure that they're not going to (laughs) spook? What? No, there are school horses there. So the majority of clubs that offer polo lessons have dedicated school horses. And these are gems. School horse, and we all know, a school horse in any discipline is just golden, right? But a school horse in polo has put up with so much. (laughs) They're They're just worth their weight in gold. They're just wonderful animals. Um, and so kind. So there will be school horses there. And if someone were to kind of start along in polo, go somewhere, there's a polo school, ride some school horses, get on different horses. That's the other thing that's great about polo school is there's probably, you probably have the opportunity to ride five or six different horses. And then you go, yeah, I want a horse like Blackie. You know, I want a horse like Sparky and, and then go search for that particular horse that's sparky horse and blackie man they got some really <laughs> exotic names in polo joy did you hear no that kid. sparky I and did. blackie i love it so well, hey, that's, <laughs> that's an argentine thing oh, so argentine name the horses in spanish whatever they are okay their name is brown right there's a thousand horses named brown every gray horse is either named dove or moon right so 
I had a little, little black mare and I named her some fun. And my husband says, that is a stupid name. She needs a good name. Like Blackie. <laughs> like, that's a stupid name. You walk into a Western barn or a pole barn, every dang horse is named after the color. This is yellow. This is Roni. This is blue. Blackie. This is blue. This is red. This is, hey, God, yeah. it is amazing. Okay, so polo is the same that way. Works. That, this is that works. Well, we, we also, we, or we name, we, t- we name ours, well, either if their registered name works, or a portion of the registered name works great. If not, they kind of get named after like what happened that year. So I know when I bought the horse or where we bought it. So we had a Dakota because she came from South Dakota and we have Winona because she, we bought her in the town named Winona. <laughs> and then you've got a Barack Obama and that was like the year he was inaugurated. And then you've got, Donald, yeah. Oh my God. That's hilarious. Uh-huh. I have Jubilee. She was born the year of Queen Elizabeth's Diamond Jubilee. Yes. And I had a horse named Diego Forlan. He's named after a soccer player that won the Golden Boots in the World Cup. So then I know when those horses were born and everything. This is amazing. Another okay. One. So before we, we're, we're running out of time, tell me the last one. Oh, I was going to say, otherwise they're named White Face and, and Black Mare. Oh, <laughs> no. That. Is Miss Alva going to keep her name? I don't know. I... <laughs> I don't know if you want to know what we're calling her as a nickname right now. I would like to know because I feel like Miss Alva being her name, she sounds like she was named after somebody's like ancient babysitter. <laughs> ancient yeah, babysitter. or third grade homeroom teacher. Yes. Um, so right now we call her Sapajo, and Sapajo means squash, and it's kind of because her head looks like a butternut squash. <laughs> oh, bless Actually, I think that's adorable. I, yeah. I support this name. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's fantastic. All right. Well, tell what you say it was Sapato? Sapajo. 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 Tell Sapajo I love her and I miss her and give her a kiss on the nose for me. And uh, you give your husband a squeeze. And it was so nice meeting you. And I'll see you in June. Yes, definitely. That's great. Calling all Thoroughbred Makeover contestants, we know you're getting pumped for this year's competition, and we have news to make it even more exciting. The Give Back to Go Scholarship is a scholarship that will cover your entry fees for the Thoroughbred Makeover. This award was created by makeover competitor and volunteer Emily Dagnot Savalgio and is made possible thanks to the Dagnot Family Foundation. To learn how you can apply for this scholarship, go to www.givebacktogo.wixsite.com slash home. Applications are open now and will close January 31st at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So get your applications in now. And from the back of the pack on the outside, commanding firm is taken second, but California Chrome shines right And now it's time for the New Vocations Winner's Circle Adoptable Horse of the Week. Well, welcome back, Leandra, to talk about how I need to probably put another horse in my barn for New Vocations. (laughs) Who do we got today? Today we have Unequal. Unequal. I love that name. I think that's cute. And so is his face. Oh my gosh, he's got a kissable face. He really does. He, his face is not one that you can miss easily in the barn because one, it's super cute. And two, he's always sticking it out of his stall ready to mm-hmm. say hi to anybody who will give him attention. He's just got this really soft eye and he's got like not a heavy blaze, but just enough to give him a little chrome, a little flashiness. So tell us a little yes. bit about Unequal. Absolutely. He is a 2016 gelding, so which makes him officially four years old this year. And he stands just shy of 16 hands. We think he will finish out just around 16 hands. And he seems like the type who is going to fill out to be a bigger, rounder body type. And so far, even what we've seen from him is a lot of courage, a lot of enthusiasm for the work that he's doing. And He just seems to really, truly enjoy every aspect of it from the groundwork up. Mm -hmm. And we have introduced him to different types of challenges, like riding around the property. And that involved 
riding by a road that was pretty busy, going by a big wrapped round bales. And even as you can see from his pictures on his profile on our website, we introduced him to some fake palm trees so mm-hmm. that he would be ready when his right adopter comes along and wants to take him to Florida. So he is ready for his adopter. And we think that he could be matched with quite a range of people. He shows a level mindset so that he could probably work with an intermediate rider who has a trainer or a more advanced rider who wants to bring him up the levels. He really shows a lot of promise, a hunter, but could go in any number of different directions. And we do think that he has prospect to spare. So he's just ready to find his person. Oh, I love it. And he's, again, such a cute horse. He's got good breeding. He has Stormcat in him. He's only had five starts, which is just shocking. And yeah. he's 15 three hands. He's a good size for just about anyone. And of course, you know, he's going to be outrageously priced. And a thousand dollars plus a fifteen hundred donation, and he's eligible for the retired racehorse project. Like yes, most he's the whole package. <laughs> he really is. He's a horse that you can have fun with now. In the training process, he's not one who wants to pick a fight with you or has no. a big spook. Nothing like that. He is really one who wants to learn and enjoys the challenge. So he is a more enjoyable restart you might say because mm-hmm. he's really with there with you along the process and just has a lot to give and wants to give so you I can definitely really tell for someone. i'm watching and his video I, I and he just say, looks so soft and so oh, kind ah oh, looks great absolutely even with his maybe a little bit smaller size than some, some people's preference he can mm-hmm. really stretch he can really compact he's really adjustable And I will say the one thing that really stood out to me when I was talking to some of the admin from the Retired Racers Project a year or so ago, they said, you know, it's hard when people try to adopt a horse and fit it to the challenge of Mm -hmm. the thoroughbred makeover because it is a very unique type of competition. Mm -hmm. And when people bring a horse into the competition who maybe doesn't have the mindset for a very sort of quick progression like they have to be ready to go for this national competition a very short amount of time so it's not every horse who's sort of mentally and physically able to do that but Mm -hmm. if you get a horse who's appropriate for that type of competition you're a leg ahead and I think this horse is exactly what they were speaking to like here is a horse who is ready to learn and could progress very quickly with the right kind of person I definitely agree with that. Well, if you are looking for your makeover horse or just your next best friend, make sure to check out Unequal as well as any of the other horses available at New Vocations at horseadoption.com. Thanks again, Leandra, for coming on today. Thanks for having me. You can find our show notes and links to today's guests on the website at retiredracehorseradio.com. Like us on Facebook and Instagram. Just search for Retired Racehorse Radio. Follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio, and Jamie's email is jamie at horseradionetwork.com, and my email is joy at horseradionetwork.com, or follow me on Instagram at joyhequestrian. Thank you so much to our amazing sponsors, Kentucky Performance Products and Cashel Products, and don't forget to check out all the other shows on Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Remember, don't forget to set your goals high and love to learn from every ride. And spay, neuter, and geld. Bye, guys. Thank you.